This week we've got the IWI Tavor X95. This is basically Tavor second gen. The first generation Tavor was a little bit larger in the butt area and a little bit fuller in the forearm area. But the biggest difference between this gun and the first gen Tavor is that there is a replaceable pistol grip area here. It's not compatible with AR grips or anything like that, but it, but it is a separate module that can be somewhat adapted. Also, you have a, a magazine release here that's in the standard AR-15 position. So in, in that respect, this gun has been changed from the original four. Another way that this gun is different is that if you notice the charging handle, it's back pretty far toward the user. And in general, the thing about bullpups is that that weight, when you, when you go to shoulder that gun, you stick that butt back in the shoulder pocket. I mean, you are really kind of surrounding that gun like a, a submachine gun style hold. And you, you really don't have a lot of, of of barrel or mass hanging out in front of your support hand. So all that weight, the, the operating system parts are back here in the buttstock. So all that weight is near the shooter. And in this case, as I was saying, this, this operating handle uh, to charge this, you, you have released it. And now I'm only, I'm only at this point at, at the forward most stroke of that handle. If I need to charge that gun, it's, it's that quick. It's that close to me. So that's, that's a way in which the X95 versus the original Tavor was made into a little bit more compact package. Uh, also, this particular gun is set up where the charging handle is located on the left. It can be relocated to the right uh, or left with, with uh, ejection on the right. While we're on this side of the gun, take a look at the fact that this ejection port cover is covering up the left side because this gun is set up for a right-hander. So uh, you've got uh, a full expanse of Picatinny rail for any kind of optics mounting you might want to do. We'll take off this Trigicon ACOG just to show that the gun also has a set of sort of embedded uh, emergency irons. And really, as emergency irons go particularly, these are great sights. The rear one is just a simple aperture, but the front one is not only adjustable for elevation, uh, but it's uh, an M16 style post, but it's also got uh, tritium for night use. Uh, you've got sling points. The, this is one here that's actually, right now it's, it's set up for a single point sling on this side for a right-handed shooter, but I can reverse that by simply taking that out and putting the cup on the other side. You've got one back here and then up here, the thing, again, that's different about the X95 versus the original Tavor is that all I do is press a, a tab here and I can slide off this section of, of rail and expose a chunk of Picatinny rail that's built into the bottom of the gun. So this cover, along with this cover and this cover, can all come off quite easily from the gun. And that's, that's a way in which it's sort of an advancement past the original Tavor. So with the X95, IWI has really brought us the second generation of what is a great platform, the Tavor. Uh, the Tavor uh, in its full auto form in Israel is, is doing yeoman service with the IDF and is protecting that country. And now U.S. consumers can have a fully consumer legal semi-automatic version that, that is of, of full overall length to meet NFA requirements for standard civilian ownership. But you really get the benefit of the developments that have been asked for by special operators in Israel on this bullpup. So this is, this is a, a, a cutting edge bullpup. For more reviews of firearms and shooting gear, check out the latest edition of American Rifleman the magazine 